Have you scored more than 680 in a GMAT and now you feel that your journey to getting into a Harvard Business School or any top elite business school is going to be super easy because the average GMAT score for these colleges is around 720. Well, to be very honest, my friend, you are in a big mistake. Yes, if you are an Indian candidate or you are a Chinese candidate, there are very high chances that you won't be getting into a top business school in the world if you have a score of 680. If you really want to target a very great school, if you want to get into something like Stanford or Harvard or any other top 25 business school in the world, it is very important that you, you target a score of more than 750. Why? And why do Indians have to face that? The logic is very simple. We have such a huge population of people who are competing against each other to score high and get into great MBA schools. Those MBA schools have very limited seats for Indians. So on that one particular seat, if you have 680 score, you are actually competing with someone who might have got 760 score. And that person would be actually the person who would be qualified for that business school. So for us Indians and for Chinese people, there is a huge competition. That's why it's very important to score more than 750 in a GMAT. Hey everyone, my name is Shlok Gupta and I am currently a STEM MBA student at the Washington University in St. Louis. It is one of the top 25 MBA programs in the world. I'm also a LinkedIn content creator. You might have heard the name Shlok Shlok, the brand I use to put out my content. And today I am going to tell you ways by which you can score more than 750 in a GMAT exam. I want to be very honest in the beginning. There is no magic pill. Of course, if there were a magic pill, everyone would be scoring more than 750. But there is a strategy, there is persistence, and there's a lot of hard work that has to go into achieving this. So today I'm going to tell you some of the great aspects about that strategy. When it comes to hard work, that is what you have to do. So let's begin. So the first thing that I'm going to tell you to do, and you must do it over this weekend is, and anytime when you are starting your prep for GMAT is to take the mock official test of GMAT that are available on MBA.com. So what happens when you take these free tests that are available? There are two free tests on MBA.com. You can go anytime and take that test. So just sit in one setting and just take that test. So when you get these tests done and when you see your score, you will have a good idea about where you really stand. It is okay to score 450. It is okay to score 600. It is okay to score 650. When you take a mock test first time of official GMAT. When I took my test first time, I actually got 550. And I had never, no way thought that I would be able to increase my score by so much and get into Washington University. So when you get the score, you will have an idea about where you lack and what are some of the things you, good, you are good at. For example, when I gave my GMAT mock test for the first time, I scored great marks in quantitative section, but in verbal sections, my marks were very bad. So I got an overall idea and that is how I started smart study. So I started focusing on only and only verbal section. Of course, I dedicated some time to quantitative, but verbal section was my main focus. Went through the concepts of the verbal section and I tried to understand the integrities and the nitty gritties of it. And then I gave a lot of practice test. So, so when I gave and practiced questions, every time I was wrong on a question, I would note it down in an Excel sheet. Yes, it is a time taking process, but every time whenever I was wrong, I would actually, I had a Excel sheet prepared with me and I would note down what question was there, what was the concept and what was something that I was doing wrong. Trust me, this is a very beneficial thing to make an error log. 
so when i practiced almost 200 questions i had at least 100 questions wrong that were of higher difficulty level but at the same time i had an error log of 100 questions so what i did was i just calculated i just did the basic maths that is available on excel to understand that what is the exact concept within verbal where i am doing the most wrong so i got to know it was sentence correction now i went through and i studied sentence correction topics again so i used the official uh, so i used the gmat club and there are a lot of questions there and that's where i practice and maintain the error log and that's when i realized okay even within uh, the section of sentence correction there are specific topics for example just for an example conjugation is where i'm going wrong or kind of modifiers is where i'm going wrong so my next target was just to practice modifier and just to go through the concepts of modifiers once again so what i'm trying to tell you here is that by making that error log and by trying to understand the data and trying to understand my marks by doing practice test and doing mock test I ensured that I was only focusing on things where I really needed attention instead of me focusing on every damn thing. If I had not taken those mock tests, if I had not made those error logs, I would have dedicated equal time to quantitative section as well as verbal section. And I would not have been able to show improvement in the verbal section. When you are targeting a very, very high score, at a score of 750, you can really hardly manage to be wrong about one or two questions. It is really that one question or that two questions that you get right or wrong in the main GMAT exam that can make or break your score. So it is very important that you need to be very precise with whatever answer you are giving. So your each concept has to be very clear. That's why I highly recommend that be smart about how you study. Do a lot of research on yourself that where you are going wrong. Maintain an error log. It is time taking, but it is extremely beneficial. And it will help you in scoring more than 750 in GMAT. People ask me, and a lot of you ask me that, what is the most difficult thing about GMAT? And I tell them that more than a test about concepts, it is equally a psychological test. And it checks your psychology, how you react to things. So a lot of times, this is something that happened with me also, that when I was giving mock test at home, I was scoring very high marks. But when I gave the main GMAT, I scored not so good marks. It was because I was in that psychology that, okay, I'm sitting in, a, in this room right now and I'm giving the main exam. And my probability of thinking and making sure that I'm giving right answers reduce significantly and I scored low marks. So another thing and another very important thing is that whenever you are giving mock tests, you need to ensure that the environment you create around yourself is very much like a GMAT exam. So make sure everything is switched off. You don't have your phone to distract you. You are sitting on a table and a chair. You have a pen and paper with you. You ensure that you practice things you don't stop in between and as soon as much as you become accustomed of giving the test in that particular fashion you will be scoring a lot more in the GMAT exam next thing is about food yes I'm not going to tell you that what should be your diet uh, everyday diet uh, I don't think I'm a very good person to talk about that. But I want to talk about that. What is the food that you should be eating on the day when you decide to go and give an exam? So this is a diet which I had followed and it really helped me. Uh, first thing is that before an exam, don't eat aloo paratha, paneer paratha, chole bhatura or anything which is extremely heavy. Just have maybe a small sandwich or maybe have a banana. Uh, that is very good. Uh, banana has a lot of energy for you and it won't make you feel sleepy. Second thing is carry Red Bull with you. I know it's it has a lot of caffeine. It might not be very healthy for you in long run, but, but for an exam, you can definitely afford to have a Red Bull. 
So carry a Red Bull with you, carry Gatorade with you if you want. That is another brand which has energy drink. Carry black coffee. I would not recommend much, but I'm I love black coffee, so I carried it. Anyway, the uh, the caffeine that you will get in black coffee, you can get it uh, in the Gatorade or Red Bull itself. So carry these things, carry banana also. And when you have interval in between, make sure that you are feeding yourself a lot because GMAT is an exhausting exam and your brain really stops working. So when you have those eight minute breaks in between the exams, make sure that you are feeding yourself with all these energy heavy rich things. Also, before your exam begins, have a Red Bull just 30 minutes before your exam is about to begin. Because Red Bull takes at least 40 minutes to kick in. So by the time you are starting your exam, you are accustomed to uh, and your brain is functioning a lot with that Red Bull. Another thing is don't have too much of Red Bull. I mean, don't have more than two Red Bulls. I would recommend don't have more than one Red Bull because if you have too much sugar rush in yourself, you might feel sleepy. So I won't recommend that. Have a lot of water, have Gatorade, have one Red Bull, have a lot of banana, have fruits that are good for your energy and make you attentive during the exam and before the exam. That is very important. And these small, small things actually make sure that you are able to increase your marks a lot. Now, coming to the mock test, I was talking about mock test initially. So after you have practiced and you see that your score has started increasing, so I would recommend that you do a lot of mock tests. You can practice those mock tests in that uh, kind of a session, in that kind of an environment of giving a real GMAT exam again and again. And then you can see that where you are improving, where you are lacking. Again, note down in error logs where you are, where there's a potential to grow. Correct those things, revise the concepts again, give mock, give mock, more and more mocks, practice analyze your data and then give mocks again and that is the way you will be able to increase your score step by step and be able to cross the mark of 750. Now if you gave GMAT exam and you didn't score that well maybe you scored 680 for example I would highly recommend that you download the ESR report you might have to pay extra money for that I think I paid 3000 rupees I don't remember exactly but I did pay that and take that ESR report and maybe contact an expert, maybe somebody who has more about idea about GMAT than you have. And then help try to understand that where you went wrong, when you have an outside perspective on yourself from a person who is an expert, I think that person would be able to help you a lot more. So have an outside perspective and try to understand that what is the potential, where are you missing, what is something with that you are not able to see yourself that person can really help you and once you have this outside perspective and you work on the feedback then just give exam again and i'm sure you will score extremely good in the next time one thing i want to say that gmat is a tough exam it is an exam about patience it is an exam about your psychology it is a exam about how clear you are with your concepts. So if you are making sure that you have these skills, then you would be that person who would be able to score more than 750 in a GMAT. So that's all from my side. In today's video, I will be back with more videos about GMAT. Please subscribe to the Unacademy GMAT channel. There's going to be ton, a lot of content that is going to come here. Also, Make sure that you follow me on LinkedIn and on my Instagram account. The links would be in the description. Thank you so much. Have a nice day. Bye guys.